remember that time we were sitting in church and Pastor Brent made up a whole new word? Well, good morning. I'm Alicia. I'm Taylor. Good morning. And good morning. How are you? I'm so good. Happy Tuesday. It is Tuesday already. And Did I you... do remember the time Pastor Brent made up a word. Well, maybe I remember the most recent time he made up a word. Oh, you mean like this has happened more than once? I don't know. But I did catch it on Sunday. <laughs> okay, what was it? Selfness. Selfness. Now, uh, I looked it up in the dictionary. Was it there? Negative. Okay, yeah. Because yes. he, he made it up. So he, because he made it up. So, do you remember what he told us about this word? Yeah, I think it was the opposite of... Well, no, I think maybe it makes a, a view of, like, obsession of self and keeping ourselves first and putting ourselves above others, which is exactly the opposite of what the Bible teaches us. Look at you. Right? I was paying, a, I was smart. paying You're attention. attention. Did, did you take some notes, too? Mental notes. Oh, <laughs> we'll work on that next okay. week. <laughs> okay, so here we are wrapping up this family series, and he waits till the very end to bring us this new word, so to speak, mm, yes. right? Why do you think he was bringing that word at this particular time right here at the end of this family series? Well, so during these weeks, we've talked about the five big things that we want to gift to our kids, and none of them have to do with athletic or academic success mm. or materialism. They all have to do with these spiritual things, starting with a din- dynamic relationship with God uh, and finishing off with a sense of purpose, right? Mm. So what Sunday was all about and something that we want to teach our kids is that, hey, you exist for so much more than beyond yourself. Your life isn't mm. only about you. You were created to love God and to love others. So yeah, I think it was a nice little pinnacle moment here at the end to finish us off to talk about uh, the importance of living for others. So the whole time I was listening to this service, I was starting to think a little bit about uh, my own family. Now my kids are grown now, um, but there was a time where there was a family calendar. Ah. And everyone like shared. Down? Well, okay, because I'm old, right? So yes. yes, these things would have been written down and we would have written all over it. But you know, they have digital versions of yeah, that sure. now. Uh, but here's this family calendar and everybody's events are, are on there. Everybody's mm-hmm. kind of color coded. Everybody's yep. kind of got different colors. Sure. Um, and all these things are happening all the time. Does your family have this kind of issue? Actually, well, yes and no. So we actually do the family calendar thing. Okay. We do it on a dry erase board calendar that hangs up in the kitchen. It helps us out. Oh. Uh, I'm, I'm very bad on my own at keeping a calendar. This is why I have at home and work a lot of people that take care of me and look after me. <laughs> this is uh, good. <laughs> so, but we actually do because it helps because we put up things like, you know, church events we got going or things I have to be at, things that Nicole might have to be at. We, I'm, I'm not, I've been joking with people lately, we're not far away. My family is not far away from having multiple kids and multiple things. And I don't really know if I'm looking forward to it. Right now, we just kept our oldest playing a sport. But Games go on there. So it actually really does help. We actually do still have the family calendar hanging up in the living room, or sorry, the kitchen Mm -hmm. that shows us what's going on each month. Yeah. So when I think about that family calendar and I think about this selfness word that Mm -hmm. Brent uh, created on Sunday, uh, I start to really think about how does one maintain this family calendar in such a way that honors God? Oh, it's tough. And I think it's especially tough for so many families that have so much going on. Mm. I mean, how often do we hear that, uh, you know, all of us, we're busy. Uh, It's hard to find time, even maybe just together as a family. So I think what you're getting at here is we want to try to center our family calendars around the Lord. Is that right? Absolutely. Like if he's not the center of the calendar, then that calendar just gets filled up with everybody's interest. Yeah. Right. And then we start trying to look for little open spots to maybe try to fit God in. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think that God's called us to fit him in. Yeah, sure. I think God's called us to a higher purpose, um, and that's to make him the center of everything. Like, mm-hmm. how can he be the Lord of our lives or the Lord of our family if he is not grounded in the center of everything that we do. Yeah, Jesus said the greatest commandment is to love the Lord our God with all of our hearts, all our souls, all our mind. In other words, with all of ourselves. And that would certainly include our time and our calendars. And you're right, it's super easy to fall into, but we wouldn't we wouldn't want to maybe demonstrate or show um, our kids that God is just something that we squeeze in mm-hmm. when we have time. And we certainly understand the challenges of this. Something I say a lot is it's not sometimes it's not making time for God. It more than that, it's like creating time. It's like mm-hmm. we got sometimes we got to be creative with the time that we have. But we've been talking about habits throughout these weeks as we've been coming up mm-hmm. and wrapping up yes. with the fast five that we've been calling it. And I think it is so, so important in the midst of busy calendars and busy seasons that we are setting aside nights of the week or maybe 
maybe just time at dinner or morning or whenever we can do that. And we're doing ahead of time. Maybe even, uh, Nicole and I really thought several years ago now, we said, hey, when we're looking at the calendar of the month, there has to be a day or two that we just totally block off and we protect it with Mm -hmm. everything we've got to protect that and guard it as family time, not only for time with each other, but as some very very valuable time for us to spend time with the kids and have faith conversations uh, and instill all the things that we want to give them, like the five things we've talked about over the last month. Right. Well, and I know that Jason and I, when our kiddos were little, and even today when they're all back in, the one way that we managed to get everyone, ourselves included, from focusing on ourselves and our own personal activities was to start thinking about how are we going to love God and love others today? Yeah. How can we as a family serve God and serve others? And Mm -hmm. so we were always looking for opportunities to serve, whether that be at church or in the community or the places that we found ourselves working, school, wherever we were. How are we going to show God that we love him and how are we going to love others? Uh, And just adding that conversation, that question, like, um, who did you love today at school? How did you show God's love at school today? Just those practical things help shift the focus off of ourselves Mm -hmm. um, and onto others, which is ultimately what God's asked us to do. Yeah, so in everything, in Mm -hmm. their jobs, when they get into high school, younger, when they're at school, when they're playing sports, we're always asking this question that you're saying, how are we going to love God and love others Mm -hmm. while we do this? You know, there's this saying, out of sight, out of mind. And we serve a God who is actually out of sight. We can't mm. see him. And how easy can he become out of our minds? So I think one thing we're talking about during these weeks, we are fighting mm. to keep God at the center of our attention, at the center of our calendar, at the center of our conversations with our kids, trying to show them, hey, whatever you do, you're doing whatever. it for God's glory, and you're taking this great commandment with you to love God and love others, whether it's on the soccer field or in the school cafeteria or at your job or hanging out with friends probably at church too, maybe mm-hmm. that'd be the easiest place, mm-hmm. but wherever we're at, the, that God is the center of calendar, conversations, time, the dinner table, etc. So yeah. And while you're loving God, you're actually making him visible to others Absolutely. because they can see God's love shining through you, which is exactly what we want for our kids and what we want for our families. 100%. Yeah, Absolutely. So it sounds like Pastor Brent might have been onto something. Uh, He's a smart guy. He is a smart guy. So kudos to Pastor Brent for the challenge to be selfless, selfless. There it is. in a <laughs> selfness kind of world. Yeah, there you wow. go. Wow. All right. Well, thanks for joining us today at the 7 at 7. <laughs>